safe, you are, uh, you are doing well and healthy, and also uh, for taking the time and this wonderful opportunity to join us in this space, in the spirit of learning. If I can excuse myself to borrow two minutes from these sessions to explain to you a little bit about uh, uh, Academy, since some of you might be the first time joining these sessions, you might be wondering what is LF Academy. So you might have seen it from uh, LF Instagram posts, or you might have uh, received it from uh, the calendar invitations from your colleagues, from your ex-colleagues, in case you are still questioning. So I'm here to answer to your questions. Next slide, please, uh, Sophia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Academy is actually part of uh, LF initiative to empower people through the knowledge sharing uh, activity. So, you know, uh, we are trying to create a safe space uh, for thinker, the curious one, the fearless one, and to develop ourselves from mindset to skill set. Uh, next slide, please. As we continue, continuously grow this community, Academy is literally taking the role of uh, institutions within the organizations with the concept of borderless collaboration and open learning. Next slide, please. By putting knowledge at the heart of this, with our strong belief that information is power, that is how the Academy was born. So we in, uh, next slide, please. We invite the fearless to venture beyond. In the future, you can look forward to sessions that cover the topic or conversation that ranges from engineering, research, human-centered design, culture, or even groundbreaking ideas. But for this round, in light of COVID-19 situation, we are trying to bring in something that might be useful, that can motivate you to thrive during the pandemic seasons. So we are hoping that you are just as excited as we are to learn and please enjoy these sessions. If you have any questions during this presentation, feel free to use the chat feature to drop your questions. Without further ado, let me pass over the session to our very first uh, speaker, so Sophia Himawan, coming from the research team. Thank there you, is. William. Thank you, William. Hi, everyone, and welcome to ALF Academy. My name is Sophia, and I'm here representing the research team today. Today, as you could probably guess, we're talking about motivation. Now, I'd, start, I'd like to start off with um, a little disclaimer here. I'm no motivational speaker. I'm no expert. What I'm here to do today is just simply share a few tips based on research and things that have worked for us and how we can stay on how we can stay motivated despite the craziness that surrounds us during this time. So in the beginning, let's take a few steps back. It was easy to romanticize working from home, whether it was staying home with our pets, catching up on additional sleep, or sharing a space with our loved ones, whatever it was, it was easy to romanticize it at first. However, soon after, unforeseen pressures began to bubble up to the surface. Working from home, and not, not just working from home, working from home during a pandemic, during a lockdown, meant that colleagues knew we were accessible 24 seven, which meant never ending calls, which also means that work came in during odd hours and weekends. It's also easy, I think, for people to imagine that people might be on Netflix all day, which is why I think it made some people feel like they needed to display productivity more than focusing on the act of being productive itself. In practice though, by and large, our productivity remain, levels have remained the same. In fact, in many cases, they've actually increased. So why then are so many of us, let's be real, are feeling a little burnt out? Because being productive doesn't necessarily correlate with motivation. And let's face it, two months of quarantine and counting have made, has just lowered morale levels in so many of us. So while it's understandable to struggle in finding the joy in what you do right now, here are some steps that you can take to slowly regain that, you know, one step at a time. So first things first, be kind to yourself. If you look at these stats from the recent ALF Hope and Unity survey, it's safe to say that we're all feeling a little stressed. Here, does COVID-19 have a direct impact on your mental health? 53% said yes. On a scale of one to 10, how would you rate your current stress levels? 61% of us rated it a seven, to a 10. And it's perfectly fine to feel stressed. In fact, you should allow yourself to feel these feelings. For some of us, it's a, it's a loss of our sense of security and freedom. For others, it could be more tangible things like financial, health concerns. And it's, it, these are not nice feelings. They're not great. 
but it signifies that we are fully human. I think some of us are also dealing with a little bit of guilt for feeling these feelings because we recognize that we're in such a privileged position. I mean, we have a job, we have the lights on. Why am I still feeling not great? I think what I'm trying to say here is I want to invite you and allow you to allow yourself to feel all these things because you have the right to feel these emotions, acknowledge it, respect it, and breathe. We should all aim to be as nice to ourselves as this alien is as nice to himself. Remember that these are unprecedented times and you're doing the best with the tools that you have and the information that you have. And there'll be things that are gonna be beyond your control. So focus on the things that you can control and make a conscious effort to not indulge in overthinking. This quote right here, when I, when I first read this quote, I had such an aha moment because I could relate to it so much. The human mind is automatically attracted to the very worst possible case, often very inaccurately. I'm such a chronic overthinker, and it's something that I just had to deal with for, such, well, for most of my life. And I found that one of the most effective methods to dealing with this um, is being mindful. How do you do that? Three things. Whenever you're feeling overwhelmed, you have to break it down. It's all about objectively analyzing our thoughts and not just believing our thoughts because we thought them, okay? So first is identify key emotions and thoughts. What exactly am I feeling? What exactly am I thinking right now? What are these thoughts, okay? After you've, after you've identified those, you have to then objectively analyze those thoughts. Are these thoughts through and do they benefit me? Okay, and then next, you're going to, have I done what I can, realistically? Have you done everything in your power within, this, with, within the circumstances that you're given and in this situation? Because if you've done your best, then that's more than good enough. Okay? And of course, it's okay to share your feelings too. Share it with people you trust. Psych Psychologists talk all the time about how social support is critical. People who perceive a sense of relatedness, a sense of connection with other people, they feel more motivated because they're happier. And honestly, more likely than not, people are just as confused as you are. Remember that you are not alone in this. And don't stop with just your mind. Taking care of your body will have a profound impact on your overall psyche. We've included some thought starters here, though I have to admit, these are all rather personal. These are some of the things that I do to make myself feel less blah. Skincare routine, cooking healthy food, start working out, and of course, wine after a long day. Okay, so after you've done all that for yourself, now that we've covered how to be kind to yourself, let's get into the action part, the doing the work part. Point number two is figuring out your own personal motivators. How do we do that, Sophia? Good question. So the first step is self-awareness. Self-motivation begins with self-awareness. So for this one, I'll need everyone's help to dig deep. Dig deep into your own personal motivator, motivators. Can you ask yourself, what drives you? For example, it could be growth, a sense of achievement, creativity, economic gain, or making the haters suffer. Whatever it is, it's important that you be honest with yourself and try to dig deep. I'm gonna give everyone about like five seconds to think about this because this is an important step into like the other things I'm gonna talk about in the next few slides. Okay. Okay, five seconds is up. So next, once you've figured out what your personal motivator is, all you need to do is apply it to every task you're faced with. Think about how that benefits you and your goals. To make your lives simpler, I've added a really fun formula on how you can organize your thoughts. So this is how it goes. This task, whatever task you're faced with, enables me to personal motivator one and motivate, I know I only asked for one motivator, but if you had multiple, you could use it this way. Enables me to personal motivator one and two, which brings me one step closer to my personal goal. And next, all you need to do is apply this to yourself. So for my case, doing this research report, which is like 60% of 
what I do, enables me to grow and hone my craft, which brings me one step closer to becoming a better researcher than what I was yesterday. Okay? So what does all this boil down to? All this soul searching, all these personal motivators, what words drive me and all that. What does it boil down to? It boils down to one word, choice. When you believe you have a sense of autonomy, a sense of choice in what you're doing, you'll feel more motivated. B.F. Skinner, an American psychologist, taught us that in his book, Beyond Freedom and Dignity in 1971. Ever since from the day you were born, everything you did was because you wanted something for doing it. We as human beings are controlled by the consequences of doing something. So when I'm working for a pleasant consequence, it feels good. It feels like I'm working towards something. I don't feel controlled. But when I'm working to avoid an aversive consequence, I feel controlled. And that's negative reinforcement. Okay? Ellen Langer, Harvard University professor, in her book, Mindfulness, explains to us, when you perceive choice, you perceive motivation. It's all about how you communicate with others. It's all about how you communicate with yourself. Team leads, some food for thought. How would you inspire your team so they feel competent? If people feel competent and are able to do worthwhile work, they'll be more empowered. And as a result, they'll feel more motivated. How will you help your team to become success seekers rather than failure avoiders? Okay, I'll leave it there. Next, let's take a step back and reevaluate. There is liberation in the suspension of more or less everything. Basically, when there is disruption, there is opportunity. By now, many of us would have settled into uh, something resembling a pandemic daily routine, which takes care of work, chores, kids, and any, any of those responsibilities. But without the need to commute and have activities outside your household, using those additional pockets of time to build a skill or tap into a hobby will make you feel much more fulfilled and motivated. And this renewed sense of excitement might also bleed into other areas of your life improving your overall psyche when you approach other commitments. So this bit is completely personal and it totally depends on what you're personally interested in. For me personally, I've started working out on a daily basis and anyone that knows me knows I'm, I'm, I'm the worst working out, I'm so lazy. But during this pandemic, I've sort of been drawn to it and I realized that working out on a daily basis has given me a sense of control when I felt like I've lost it because everything else is is well not going too great so by giving myself a time every single day to focus on myself it's definitely made me a lot more excited when I, when I approach other things beyond working out so that's something that you guys can try as well to conclude I really have to stress that we're all navigating the same storm but on different boats remember do what's best for you, as everyone's dealing with this situation differently. If that means upskilling and finally learning how to code, great. If picking up a new skill isn't for you, then focus on doing your best at your existing commitments and be sure to make the most out of your rest time in between. Please do not feel pressured into turning into quarantine bakers and chefs. You need to do what works for you and remember we're not robots, right? Rest is extremely important. Rest is extremely, extremely important to productivity and motivation because energy is finite. Our energy is finite, not the universe's. Self-compassion and awareness is key to a healthy mindset, whether it's a pandemic or not. And I know the things that we talked about today can sound a little basic, but guess what? It's because it's they are. And things don't need to be complex in order for them to be effective. The beauty in it is that they're so simple and that what's make it, that's what makes it so great and applicable to our day-to-day -day lives. Um, yeah, we've come to the end of our presentation and we hope that some of your tips, um, some of our tips can help you gain back that spark. And remember, you can always reach out to ALF Cares um, for anything and everything, right, Emily? 
Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then now, now that we've covered that presentation, we would like to invite some of our panel speakers uh, to join us. Okay, can I, is everyone ready? Should I do a roll call for all the panel speakers? Do we have everyone, Gail, Clara, Zoom, and Ian? Do we have everyone on the line? Present. Yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm here. here, Zoom here. Awesome, thank you I'm so here. much guys for taking the time on a Friday evening to join us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, we have some really cool people joining us from all over the world, all over the region. So maybe we can start by, um, tell, maybe the panelists can start by telling us a little bit about yourself and what you do at ALF um, in case people aren't, aren't that familiar. So maybe we can start, maybe Clara, you can go first. I knew you were gonna call me first. <laughs> Alphabetical, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, exactly that. <laughs> okay, hi everyone. Uh, I see some people are not from ALF uh, and some of them are my friends. Hi, don't be a <laughs> troll. Say hi. <laughs> uh, so I can give a bit of introduction about myself. So I've been with Ella for about a year, just cross a year actually. Uh, and I'm a UX designer, a user experience designer in Singapore. Is okay. that enough? Thank you, Perfect. Thank okay. you. Who would like to go next? Ian, maybe? Yeah, sure. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Ian. Um, so I joined Aleph for almost um, three years now, I think. Um, so originally, I am Malaysian. I'm from KL, but um, I started in Aleph KL. Currently, I am in Jakarta because um, I got posted to help out with Aleph Jakarta for uh, a year plus. <laughs> so I'm still serving that uh, that term. Yeah, I, I, and also uh, my role is that I'm a UI UX lead, leading a team here. Thank you, Ian. Okay, you're welcome. Gail, would you like to go next? Sure. Hi everyone, I'm Gail. I, uh, I basically run Aleph in Malaysia and I work very closely with everyone in Malaysia but obviously the group and regionally with Eric and Aman and, and Zoom and all that. So very glad to be here today. Thank you. Thank you Gail. And Zoom? Hey, hey everyone. I'm a baby Alephian. <laughs> I, I think I'm the youngest in here. Uh, literally today is my phone two months just being the Ale an Alephian. Um, I don't know, I, you know, should ask Eric that should I, uh, did I uh, pass the probation yet? <laughs> 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 you know, so, so actually it's just a very uh, funny question, but it's express, uh, you know, my own Super, super new uh, experience for all my life, uh, oh, you know, yeah. life, you yeah. know uh, joining the new industry, uh, oh. joining the new company, new culture, in oh. new circumstances to all the world, you know. Yeah. The first day and the first month I joined the company, you know, all of us work from home. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, glad to be here today to talk to, the, to everyone. Thank you, Zoom, for sharing that with us. Actually, I'd just like to build on what you said. You're someone who is fairly new to the company and you joined during the beginning of a pandemic. That must be pretty challenging, adjusting to not just the pandemic, but the culture and getting to know everyone, the team. Can you share a little bit with us on how you manage that? Uh, how I manage that? Um, yeah. To be honest, I, I don't think I manage well, you know, because I, <laughs> I, 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 I don't want everyone like you have the same emotion, those kind of things, because mm. it's, it's quite a mixture of everything up and down. But this, but it's, it's quite, quite interesting to me, actually. Um, uh, I joy uh, uh, when I, uh, when the COVID-19 actually uh, just and very little in, in China that everybody yeah. thought it's somewhere else in the moon, not relating to us. <laughs> then when I officially working for Aleph, it's boom, everywhere. You cannot move, you cannot do this, you cannot do that. So um, uh, how I manage this is like, you know, my tip is just like talk more and read more. 
Mm. You know, mm. uh, when you uh, struggle with anything, just approach mm. even the pe the people that you don't think that is related to that. Mm. But then they may provide you a lot of like a new angle of view and also it's just simple sometimes new voice and new face you know yeah. so yeah. so it's it's kind of like you have you like oh it's okay they 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 even they very different in the situation but then they 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 support they actually they they got a many meaningful uh thinking mm -hmm. and and uh, some kind of the um energy mm -hmm. to prepare. yeah so then uh, during my, my journey two months, I talked to many people, uh, especially to local team in here in mm. Vietnam and mm. uh, also the regional team, uh, especially they all available uh, on the Zoom and the Meet. Very lucky me, yeah. <laughs> we're looking for home. I can call them on the Meet, can call them on the Zoom, can approach on the WhatsApp and stuff. And yeah. then uh, feel like it's more uh, reachable. Uh, mm. unreachable, enrichable, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, step by step. Um, yeah. One thing in here, I, I, I need to be patient to myself. You mm. know, like, mm. you know, sometimes you rush yourself and you, you feel panic when you don't know the thing and you're not confident mm. and you don't know this, you don't know that, you don't understand, uh, you don't know that you want to be to succeed, but then, yeah, you know, but yeah. then, you, you rush yourself don't mm. don't mm. be you know mm. be yeah. patient to yourself or at upper level is be careful to yourself you know yeah yeah so. and i think i think like thank you so much for sharing that you have good days and bad days that that is very refreshing to hear because i think a lot of us we feel the pressure to always have good days always be on top of things always know the answer to everything and always have a smile on our face but you just showed us that it's okay to not have all the answers and have bad exactly. days as long as yeah. you work towards how do I better myself, you know? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So thank you yeah. so much for that, Zoom. So I have a question for, for everyone, actually. Is there something that you tell yourself or your team members every morning to keep your motivation levels up? Clara? I can go first. Yeah. So every morning, tell something you tell, Yeah. Uh, okay, so I just describe my morning routine. I okay. usually just, I just get ready as though I'm commuting to work. Because mm -hmm. now I think most of us or every one of us is actually working from home. So yeah. I will usually have a glass of water, just mm. or vocal warm up before meeting. Because we all have stand ups in the morning <laughs> and, and meetings also. And then yeah. some days I'll have breakfast or tea just to feel better. Uh, if I don't have time, then I'll skip that. It's fine. Uh, what, uh, what I do every day is, I actually have two quotes in front of me on my desktop that says, trust in the process and done is better than perfect. Mm. Uh, th these two quotes, it's something that I hold um, very closely to me just for reminders. And another thing I do in the morning is I usually plan my day every day mm. uh, using a time box method. Uh, just pen and paper so nothing fancy yeah. right mm, i yeah. just plan my tasks very micro ones so for example um let's say i need to answer the panel questions i need to read and answer the panel questions right i'll give myself a maximum of 15 minutes <laughs> right just to do the first draft it doesn't have to be perfect mm -hmm. and then um, because i'm a designer so maybe i'll move on to mocking up screens and yeah. i'll give myself 30 minutes Mm, mm. So after the allocated time, I will actually really move on to the next task, mm. even if it's not completed to my satisfaction. Uh, instead mm. of being stuck and procrastinate or whatever, I'll just strike it off and I progress. Mm. So I mm. up, uh, and Zoom mentioned about some days are not your best, which yeah. is why I'm not perfect every single task, every mm. day. But I can always iterate it. I can yeah. always improve it. You know. So maybe for designers or developers or uh, MDs and whoever's listening to this, I mean, regardless of your role, right, you can plan it in a way that you can focus on smaller tasks and then uh, you can, or you can go big picture, focus on a really big task mm. or you can focus on something small, but plan it in a way that works for you mm. because you are actually designing the workflow only for you and you can tweak it as you go along. So mm. that's the best part. You're doing mm. it and no one else. And then if it doesn't work, then try something else. 
strive for progress rather than for perfection. Correct. I really like that. Yeah. So very that's cool. My, that's Thank you. Oh. Ian? Um, I feel a bit nervous. Not sure if it's because I'm nervous or it's the coffee. <laughs> okay, so something that I tell myself every day when I wake up. Um, for me, um, it's not very profound, but I guess it's what's for lunch and what's for dinner. <laughs> because, Sometimes that's enough, yeah. Because um, in my current situation, um, I, I am in charge of uh, a lot of the cooking. Uh, so I cook mm. for myself and for my sister, my brother-in-law. So when I wake up, um, I have to think, okay, so what, what do I make? Uh, do I have enough time to cook? Do I have, um, or sh should we just, you know, order delivery? Um, but aside from that, I think echoing what uh, Clara has shared, um, I guess what really motivates me is not so much um, the things I would tell myself because, um, but it's more of uh, being intentional about a, a daily routine. So, yeah. I would get up in the morning. Um, of course, now when I wake, before the work from home situation happened, I used to wake up a bit earlier, but now I tend to sleep in a little bit more. It's not a good thing. <laughs> but I do try to um, yeah, carry on as if, I, uh, as if um, I'm still going to work, right? So like, I'll get up, I'll, I'll shower, I'll have breakfast, um, I'll make coffee, which is what I usually do even before the work from home started. And I realized that has really helped me to um, stay motivated throughout the day. It gives me like a sense of normalcy, almost as if, um, mm -hmm. rather than um, yeah, just letting the circumstance of being stuck at home um, overwhelm me. Mm -hmm. So I think that has really helped um, motivate me. As for um, what I do with my team, um, to be honest, uh, okay, we have stand-ups um, every morning um, uh, with the clients um, joining in as well. And yeah, we just update each other on what, what we plan to set up to do for today. So I think there is, um, there is kind of like a effect when you declare that, okay, today I want to accomplish this, I want to um, do this. Um, and by the end of the day, I want to see some results. Um, that's what we do in stand-up. Um, maybe uh, say what we're going to work on for today. I think that really helps um, to put our minds in, um, in, in like the, the mindset where, okay, this is what I want to accomplish for today. So establishing those micro goals and stand up mm. really helps uh, motivate. Um, of course, for myself, I don't say anything to my team. I do that, okay, after the stand up, let's get to work. <laughs> it's not the most motivating thing, but I think it's the process itself um, of what we do that actually um, motivates one another. Yeah. Thank you, Ian. It's all about having a routine and being consistent with achieving your micro goals that you've set for yourself. What about you, Gail? Oh, for me. Uh, I, I don't think it's anything to do with what I say to myself. Um, I, I, it's more about getting that, like you said, having a routine. Yeah. Uh, and I think, I think it's routine that I picked up along the way that I felt made me feel powerful and, and, and productive. Uh, so obviously it, it, it altered from the start of MCO to what it is now. But essentially yeah. what it is now is, is you know, usually I, I, I mean, I have a kid, so it wakes up early. So we get up early and spend time with the kid a bit. Um, but also, you know, things like I, I plan what I'm going to eat that day because I'm trying to eat healthy the last three, four months. Uh, so even just planning that makes me have to plan around, you know, around work. Do I have time to cook? And I do a bit more cooking now, which is mm. really fun. Um, so, so that's on one side. Uh, interestingly, I play a bit of keyboard in the morning, uh, just to kind of, uh, not, not, and I, I try not to play songs that exist. I try to create riffs just cause I feel it gets me, gets my mind going, gets my mind thinking. Um, and then, uh, one part that I look forward to every morning is uh, the, the, the stand-up that we have with the senior management team that happens every day, first thing in the morning. Um, and, and because I feel it empowers me, uh, and I hope it does with the, the rest of the team, uh, but it empowers me in terms of what we're doing next, how we connected, mm -hmm. how are we, and it, it sets a tone for the rest of the day. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, you know, I, we tend to end our days with, uh, you know, whether it's a pitch for Parkway or a pitch for CPF, Eric's on that call. So I look forward to, uh, every day I sit there and I go, must be great for Eric, must be great for Eric so that at the end of the day, Eric can give me, you know, some compliments uh, and we go from there. <laughs> uh, but no, other than that, I think, uh, like I said, routine is, is key. Um, and, and I think as long as you find what's, what, make, what makes you feel powerful and enabled to, to, to get through your day and, and go through the challenges that you know are going to come or those are not going to come uh, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn out great no matter what happens. 
Yeah. I like how you infuse your day with little pockets of time for yourself, like playing the keyboard, spending time with your kid. You mentioned the keyboard part that, that intrigued me a little. I understand that you're in a band. So yeah. how, do to, how do you manage to play together in a time like this? Like, how do you manage oh. to go jamming together when you're not able to see each other? How does that work? Yeah, so we haven't, we haven't jammed in three months. Uh, just be, we, we did try the whole Skype thing. Uh, or, or Zoom, or we tried different mediums that just did not work. This is for the simple reason, maybe bandwidth here sucks. I mean, we can't even sing happy birthday in, in time. So you, you try to put two guitars, a drum and everything, it just doesn't work. Uh, but, but what we ended up doing was, was realizing that we still needed to, I mean, we still want to play music and we mm. still have people saying that they miss us, they miss watching our shows and stuff. So we started doing more video contents, which is something we've always wanted to do. Um, and eventually, it's like a blessing in disguise because we always wanted to do it. We just never took the time or tried to figure out how, what to do. And I think it's a bit of force optimization uh, that mm. we, we just had to kind of figure out how are we going to do videos. And one of our guys tends to knows how to put videos together. So we've mm. recorded, I think we've released like four or five videos during the MCO. Uh, mm. I don't do much of the work. I just show up for five minutes, do my part and then get out. Uh, but the guys do a lot more work. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's improved our, YouTube views by like 250% over the last month somehow. Uh, so, I mean, can't complain. It's been, it's been great. Uh, the one thing that my bandmates keep saying though, and we had an interview with the radio station the other day and one of the bandmates was saying, yeah, uh, Gail tends to send me the videos at, th at 3 a.m. Because that's when I, I do them. I, when I finish work, I, I start doing the videos and that's usually like maybe 2 a.m., 3 a.m. and then get it done. Uh, yeah. but, but, but I think as long as you're... You know, someone said something in our in our flocket this morning. Uh, Basil presented, and he said something about. Uh, I think it was around the fact of of, of, of doing things passionately rather than doing things uh, in quantity. And, yeah. and I think uh, I think that's the the key thing. Like the, the, you're passionate about what you're doing. Uh, you know, I love what we do at Aleph. Uh, I love working with the team that we we have. Um, I think we've got some great people around. Um, and, and on top of that. You no know, family, you know, love the family, can't complain there. And then music, love my friends, love the music. So you, you don't feel the, the, the tiredness and you don't feel the, you, I don't feel like I have to force myself to motivate myself to do these things. I think it just comes naturally. I think there's just not enough hours in the day to do all the things you want to do. That's about it. Wow. It's really awesome that you still find a time to, I mean, this, I mean, jamming is really hard right now because for obvious reasons, but you yeah. still are putting out videos. I've seen some of your newer videos and they're really well produced and your yeah. views are, your views have gone up 250%. So congratulations on that. Thank you. So, yeah. So you, you touched upon your family, your band. If there's anything, if you could take one positive from the current situation, what would it be? It doesn't have to be about work. It could be anything. What's your biggest positive from all of this? I, I think, I think uh, like you said, having these small pockets of time oh. with the family. Uh, I mean, I, 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 don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, I feel we've achieved a lot, whether it's work, music, or family. We've done a lot. Um, but you know, I do miss the social interaction part of things. Oh. Uh, um, but the fact that you, know, you can sit there and you, you might have a 15-minute break in between two calls and you can quickly kind of say okay let's grab a bite together let's eat a salad or whatever yeah and then and, and okay thank god my wife thank god my wife is here because my, my kid doesn't eat in 15 minutes but uh even that's just uh it's it's, it's nice you know even yeah. you know help help we, we 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 taught my kid how to potty train over the mco so wow. you know at, at the beginning that was that was you know kind of fun to be there for that i would have usually missed all of that right i would have been at work i would have been staying late etc so yeah i think uh, family is kind of the, the biggest positive around it family is everything isn't it that's so special that you got to witness such a pivotal part <laughs> of your of your baby potty, potty training yes potty training i mean that's yeah cool. that must have been so special congratulations on your kid for, you. for successfully being potty trained okay <laughs> So, Clara. Yes. Clara, hi. 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 I know you live with your family right now. And what's, can you tell me, like, what, what it's like living in such close quarters with your family 24-7? And what have you learned about your family, spending this much time with them, not being able to leave the house and so on and so forth? Cool. Learned uh, about I can't bad mouth them because they're just outside. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding about it. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I think initially it was pretty tough. 
because I'm someone, I think somebody mentioned also, uh, I'm someone who needs a lot of alone space and time, you know, by myself, um, whether working or, or not working, you know, uh, just to do my own stuff and all. So it, yeah, it, it takes a bit of uh, adjusting to do. Uh, but my family has been very supportive. Uh, both they have been helping me a lot on food because I cannot cook to save myself. Uh, oh. I, I might burn the kitchen down. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So my mom does most of the cooking uh, most of the time. So normally when I finish work, I'll have home cooked meals, which is a blessing. Like super. Yeah. Blessing. Yeah. But even on days where um, there's no food, I will just usually just go out and get my own food. Or mm. just delivery and all. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's been a bit of adjusting to do. Uh, and I realized that being stuck in a room is actually not that bad. And I mean, initially, I mean, a lot of people think, oh my God, stuck in a room for days, right? It's okay. Then it becomes weeks. Yeah. And then you it lose becomes track of month. time. Yeah, it becomes like months. And you don't even know how long you're going to be stuck at home for. Yeah. But I realized what, actually, nothing in my room changed, you know, everything is the same. <laughs> I mean, you can't see my room now. But what changed is I think my perspective. Mm. Uh, I, I'm not stuck at home. I choose to be at home. Wow. You know, I want to be at home. You know, and I, I, I make sure my workplace and my living space is designed in a way that I really enjoy being in. Mm. You know, mm. I'm um, productive, but I also take time off and I take mm. breaks. And if I meet anyone, I can reach out to my friends. I mean, Zoom calls and all are, uh, are super easy. Or I can talk to my family mm. and all. Yeah, I think the interesting thing I learned about my family is I found out that my mom likes rabbits. <laughs> oh my God, there's hope for me to get a pet for them in the future when they want Congratulations. to. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah. I found out that she was looking at these rabbit pictures and she was going like, oh my God, so cute. And she never say this kind of thing. I mean, if you know Asian Chinese parents. I yeah. Mean, some of you might know, you know, they don't want pets at all. So it's like a breakthrough for me. Wow. Yeah, it's like a light bulb moment. I'm going like, ha, next time I can surprise them with a rabbit. That's huge. I'm rooting for you. As a cat mom. Uh, I know, I know. <laughs> I, I know, I, I talk about Your it too. pet is the cutest. Like, oh, thank you. <laughs> so you not get it, but like, pet fur babies are the best. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so Ian, hi. <laughs> Ian, we actually have something in common. Do you want to guess what that is? Cats. <laughs> oh, okay. Now we have two things in common. <laughs> We're actually both introverts. Nice. We're both very introverted. So I know mm -hmm. that you stay with your sister and brother-in-law, mm -hmm. but you used to live alone in a kosan. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. How do you manage this change as an introvert? Yeah. Okay, I think I shared this a little bit in the email. So I'm introverted by nature, um, that is correct. Um, and being introverts, um, any of the introverts out there, you, are, you know very well that you need alone time. It's not just me time, it's alone time where you need time to be by yourself, just to do the things you like and not talk to anybody um, and just um, kind of just rest your, and recu recuperate your emotional energy and your social energy. Um, so when the whole um, pandemic started and the work, whole work from home situation be began, um, I was staying in my uh, Kosan. Think of it like a studio apartment. Uh, that's where I stay in Jakarta most of the time, um, be previously before this. And, and it was just me by myself. So I was staying there for three days. Then after that, I got the news that the work from home uh, will be extended until further notice. So I decided, you know, it's, it makes more sense. And I think it puts my family back in Malaysia at peace as well if I would... Oh. Uh, to stay over with my sister because you know they know that okay uh, family is together and I'm not by myself mm. uh, which gives them more peace of mind and so I moved over uh, to my sister's apartment and even though back in KL I do stay with my family and now in Jakarta I'm staying with family but back in KL we have a, a I live in a terrace house so there are many levels um, I can just hide myself in my room or my brother's room which I normally do I don't really uh, spend a lot of time um, like talking to people when I'm home. But now, in, um, where I'm staying at, in my sister's apartment, it's just, uh, it's just one floor. No, I, can't, I can't hide anywhere. <laughs> so initially, um, being an introvert, I need my alone time. But, you know, it's a bit more challenging to get that alone time now. Um, so whenever I'm with my sister and my brother-in-law, uh, I realize that um, because I'm 
always uh, around people 24 7 i get a lot more irritable um so i coined this new term called uh, irritable uh, introvert syndrome iis <laughs> we'll submit it to a medical journal uh, sometime soon <laughs> yeah basically uh, i i find that little things um uh, would really annoy me which uh previously it wouldn't annoy me at all and i find myself um right at the tipping point, you know, when you just want to explode or say something or lash out uh, emotionally. And I, I've, I want to, so um, I know that it's not because of um, anything else. It's just because um, uh, it's, it's a personal issue that, you know, I'm just irritable because uh, I've been around people for, for too much, for too long. Mm -hmm. So I stopped myself from trying to explode, from um, going over a tipping point, maybe saying something that I might regret later on or straining the mm -hmm. relationship around me and it's not like I can run anywhere um, given the situation <laughs> so um, I think how I cope with that um, is that uh, when I feel uh, like something's really irritating me um, what I would do is I'll just stop myself um, I'll just step back for a bit and th and just tell myself that you know um, emotions is only temporary mm. you know after give it like five to ten minutes the emotion will pass you to calm down um, you feel totally different from how you felt um, in that oh. in that situation and yeah having that actually uh, yeah. reminding myself intentionally and constantly really helps and i feel that be, being in this situation where i'm always surrounded by people also affects work so oh. even sometimes you know we during work we have many calls and all that and sometimes uh, certain things or uh, certain issues will crop up and um, it will also irk me and annoy me so I, I will do the same. Um, so I will just try to take a step back, um, mute, my, mute my mic if possible, <laughs> in case anything slips out. <laughs> and yeah. then, um, yeah, and then just compose myself and come back uh, into oh. the situation. So I feel that yeah. really helps me um, mm. to uh, cope with this uh, scenario. Yeah, Emotion, I, yeah. yeah, emotions are fleeting, but words are forever. Thank you yeah. for sharing that, Ian. Okay, so now I just have one final round of questions for everyone. Uh, feel free to jump in if you'd like to answer. So we have this question. What's the, what's the habit requiring the least effort that makes the greatest difference? Anyone can jump in at this point. Uh, uh, again, question please. What's the, what's the habit requiring the least effort that makes the greatest difference to you? Oh, I think that for me, it's like the never stop to learning the new things because we are the tech company, right? So we mm -hmm. have many things, the new thing to do, right? So if we, 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 we are like the love to learn the new thing, we can go up and beyond the other and can support our team mm -hmm. very well. Yeah, I Thank am. You. Yeah. I am Ning from uh, I left Thailand. Yes, I am the Thank PM. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ning, for sharing that. That's, Thank you so much. Does because anyone... one thing is very simple, like yeah. what you need, uh, what you like, you just open some picture of that. You see, like, I love my niece. I open all her pictures and I feel, wow, so cute, so great, this and that. If you love cat, you search more cat, uh, you know, YouTube and picture. You love motorbike, just find something make you feel a little bit pleasure. Very simple. Sometimes the greatest things are the simplest things, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Zoom. Okay, next Final question from, from us. What's the biggest thing that you've learned from this pandemic? Any revelations you've discovered about the world, about you, about your team, about your dog? I think for me, I realize that uh, the biggest thing I realized is we have actually a lot of time <laughs> on our hands, uh, like a lot of time. But, uh, and we want to do everything. Like for me, I, I'm never bored. I'm very good at self-entertaining. <laughs> and there's so many things that I want to do. Like I just bought a ukulele, but I haven't started learning. Nice. And I can't complain that I don't have time now. But yeah. I just have a lot of things I want to do. Mm, so that's the, the biggest thing I realized is we have a lot of time and how we choose to spend every day and every minute um, is truly important. Like, do you want to wake up and be miserable because of the home state? Oh. Uh, I think like Sophia mentioned just now during the presentation, which, which was very good by the way, 
Oh, thank you. <laughs> nice, Brandy. Uh, yeah, I think she mentioned about um, focusing on the positive things. So for me, if it's something that I think if you cannot control it, then don't let it bother you. Mm. But if it's something that bothers you, you think about what is the next step. Mm. Whether you is there something you can do? Is it a let's say in a work context, right? It's um, about a team or a team lead or anything. Yeah. Can you talk to the team lead? Are you able to reach out to, uh, let's say, our happiness team? I mean, if you're from Atlas, but if it's about a personal life thing, uh, can you talk to your family, your partner, your friends yeah. about it? Uh, are you able to resolve it? If you can't, for example, we cannot resolve the stay home thing. I cannot yeah. go to the government, I mean, where we are at Singapore government and say, hey, we want to go out. Yeah. Let us out, you know. <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah. So if it's something like this, then what we can do is change our perspective and yeah. change our world. Yeah. yeah. We can be wow. at the same place, but everything changed. But we are still at the same place. Wow. Yeah. And we are really resilient. I found that humans are really resilient, really adaptable. Yeah. Um, we have survived so many historical events. Mm -hmm. So many. You know, and I'm sure we'll get through COVID-19 together. Thank you so much, Clara, for sharing that. <laughs> no worries. Yep. Loved it. Okay. Is there is there does anyone else want to share what they've learned from the pandemic? Otherwise, we can uh, move on to the questions <coughs> from the from the floor. I think, I think I'll just, maybe I'll just add. Oh, okay, oh. you go again. Okay, sure. Uh, just very quickly, I think. Um, during this time, one thing that really rings true is that um, necess necessity is the mother of invention. Um, that being said, I realize that a lot of the things that uh, we do um, before the whole uh, pandemic situation happened and currently now when we're all working from home, the same thing still happens. You know, like, you know we have workshops with clients, we have, um, we have reviews, uh, we, we do conduct research you know, uh, with participants um, and all that it's still the same thing going on just that we have found new ways to do it mm. and we just innovate based on um, whatever tools or whatever the circumstances are and we just adapt and evolve I think that is really um, um, it's really interesting that you know whatever that we do it doesn't stop it's just we just find new ways to do it we just find new ways to communicate new ways to learn um, new ways to grow so yeah that's just um, something that I'd like to add Mm, mm. Adaptability, right? That is that is the core of being human. <laughs> yeah. Adapting to new situations, new environments, new people. We somehow always just figure out a way to do it and thrive, not just survive. Mm -hmm. Gail, you wanted to say something as well. Uh, <clears throat> I'll keep it short, but I was just going to say that I, I feel that um, I, I've learned that communication has become really key. Uh, and I've noticed how a bit more effort in communication uh, can go a long way, whether it's emails, calls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I've seen a big change in us and how we work, uh, and how yeah, we spend a lot of time talking, but the output of what comes out of those conversations is a lot better and bigger and stronger than it used to be. I feel, at least from our team point of view. Uh, so I think communication plays a is is a is something that you know even when we come out of MCO, I feel we need to kind of uh, keep. Uh, uh, in our mindset in terms of uh, how we move forward and how we work together. Communication for sure. Thank you, Gail. All right, Avis, uh, do you want to share yep. some of the questions that you've sh shortlisted from the floor? Yes, uh, there's uh, quite a few questions uh, from the pres uh, presentation itself, right? Uh, as I actually asked, uh, asked, a question. <laughs> oh, <laughs> asked a question. Thank you, As. Uh, how might we how might we how might cope we? Uh, negative? Yeah, how might we uh, cope negative overthinking when we are not physically socializing and without uh, validations from people? So that's the first question mm -hmm. from asked. Yeah, how do you avoid overthinking without being social with people? Yeah, I think I think the key to not overthinking is being mindful, like what I said earlier. And being mindful doesn't require you to be social, or be around people physically. Being mindful is to is to listen to your thoughts, understand what they're saying, and then stop it in its tracks if it doesn't serve you any benefits. 
And that doesn't require anyone to be around you. It just requires for you to talk to yourself and be objective. Because sometimes like when we listen to our own thoughts, we think we're being objective when we analyze our own thoughts, but that's not really the case. How can you be objective when your thought is coming from yourself? By default, you are already subjective. So it's, you have to take a step back and really, really just, yeah, objectively analyze the thoughts. You don't need to be around people to figure that out. And it takes practice, yeah. really. I, yeah. Yeah. Practicing the uh, mindfulness uh, exercise that uh, you have uh, just presented uh, earlier on, right? Uh, asking yourself if the emotion is right. You know, asking, are these uh, thoughts true? And, you know, uh, yeah, I agree that that would uh, actually help uh, to not overthink uh, certain things. All right, uh, moving on uh, is uh, a question from Gail. Uh, this is something outside from the topic. He what? asked if Sophia can share, can share oh. this on like... Malaysia Flocket. <laughs> yeah. I don't just share the deck, just show up at the Flocket and present it. Yeah, I would love to, <laughs> if you have me. me, for sure. Excellent. But the question is, why aren't they in this call? Because if it's well, that's, that, that's a separate that's a separate story we will discuss with them. Ah. That's a separate story we'll discuss. But, but, but I'll get my people to get in touch with your people. Yeah, we can take this offline. <laughs> okay. So there's another question. I think uh, maybe in the discussion we we would have already answered this, but uh uh from for Gil, this is for Gil. Uh what's your morning routine? I think you have uh, answered it uh, earlier yeah. on where you say that you play some music and you, uh, you know, spend some time with your kids, right? Yeah. Or kid, yeah. One kid. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, with your kid. So, uh, another question from Eric. What's, what is he, your health routine looking powerful? Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so look, I, uh, uh, I, oh. Oh, I have not drunk a piece of al a drink of alcohol since NCO started. Wow. I have been really monitoring what I eat. I haven't had a Coke or a Sprite, which anybody who knows me would know I've had two or three Cokes a day uh, previously. Uh, no, I've been really, really, um, I, earlier in the year, I really set out to lose weight this year. Um, and, and I was doing ex a bit of exercise before the MCO. I haven't done exercise du during the MCO just because it was tough to do it here. Um, and uh, I, so I, felt, I felt that I needed to eat a lot healthier, which is why I got into cooking as well, a lot more. Um, so now I've lost, yeah, I've lost a fair bit of weight now. I'm really pleased with myself. So um, yeah, I hope I continue. Nice. I've, I've stubbed up my drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of us. Um, <laughs> uh, the other question for Gil again is, uh, oh. do you sleep? I think Santel asked this question. <laughs> do you even sleep? <laughs> no, no, not much. It's true. I don't sleep much. Uh, I, sleep, I, I tend to recover on weekends. My, and, and, and I tend to sleep mm. on weekends when my, when my kid sleeps. Like he takes an afternoon nap, I'll be like, yeah, sure, I'll put him to sleep. I get brownie points with the wife because I'm the one putting him to sleep, but actually I'm going there because I want to sleep. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, the last uh, question, I think the last question would be, uh, just now I think Clara shared a little bit about uh, how, how she separates her space and, uh, you know, uh, from work and from her, uh, you know, personal leisure time, right? Uh, that keep her sane. So Aman is requesting to see your room. <laughs> ah, no, it's not prepared. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a BR wow. room. <laughs> no, it's not prepared today. <laughs> For okay. viewing. Okay, never mind. It's okay. COVID, it's okay. We respect I'll that. All the people to the house. We respect that. Um, is uh, that's I think that's the last question. Uh, is there is anyone uh still have questions to ask? Uh, you can post on the chat. If not, then we can do the yeah. closing. Okay. Uh, if there is no more questions, right? No, Avis, you skip my question. Yeah. Well, yeah exactly. Exactly. Then I replied. I replied to you. 
Sani and Zenny is still in progress. Uh, they are still doing okay. some touch up, uh, makeup, and also we will. I have two questions. Will, uh, uh, the second one. Uh, oh, sorry. There's another one, huh? Sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry. The second one. Sorry, oh, okay. uh, very... <laughs> Which one again? Take the last one. Take the last one. The last does one? Cost? How much does your cap <laughs> cost? <laughs> How much does your cap My cost? cap? <laughs> my cap my cap is from Japan. Uh, oh. it doesn't cost anything. Yeah. It doesn't cost anything. <laughs> hey guys, don't draw <laughs> attention to me. Okay. I think we can close this. Any yeah, last let me just do the yeah. uh, I got a question uh, for Avis. I think it's okay. Yes, Jared. Yes. Uh, Avis, can you tell us what is uh, your favorite alcohol that you have been drinking during this uh, quarantine? <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Over it, Jared. Uh, uh, I, I actually, I drink red wine. Uh, I don't have a very like specific brand, but I always go to this, uh, go back to this brand called Naked uh, yeah, you can find it in the NTUC. It's not expensive. <laughs> yeah, so that is that alcohol that I always drink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but drinking too much alcohol is not good for you, okay? Uh, but once a while is okay, according to Sophia. <laughs> One or two glasses is fine. No, Sophia said two glasses every day. Antioxidants, <laughs> yes. No, no, yes. no. Every day, I, I is, every day is too much. No, I've, I've, looked this, I've looked this up. In a week, you can't have more than five drinks. So it depends how you spread out those two glasses. Right, depending ah. on the oh, glasses. Right, it depends right. on the size of the glass, right, Sophia? Yeah, depending on that the is true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have my cup. Let's go. Okay, let me just I have uh, do a something to say. Yeah. Wait, wait. Hmm. Uh, uh, not yeah, a question, yeah. but I think um, uh, I was I was feeling a bit uh, bit low since last one or two days. Just general, no, uh, nothing specific. But I think this talk and and the mood here has uh, just uplifted my my Friday evening. Uh, so thank you, thank you uh, to all of you who who were involved in this. Uh, I really had a good time, and you know I'm 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 feeling light and happy inside. Thank you guys. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you, for Thank you really Jasmine. Nice oh, that's very sweet. Thank you yeah. so much to everyone for joining us. Special thanks to the ALF Academy yeah. team, the panelists, and everyone for not only joining yeah. us but participating. So thank you, everyone. Good job. Mm. Yeah, uh, just to do a very quick uh, recap and wrap up, right, uh, is that uh, there is a lot of uh, key, uh, key points and key things that we have discussed in the session. I think the well, uh, few key takes take away is that uh, uh, emotional, emotion is uh, temporarily and uh, through this embracing in this new normal, right, it's really our choice to be, live a good day every day, right? So, um, we, we, we just have to change our perspective and uh, we can also, like what Clara said, we can change the world. So, uh, and, and uh, just to sum up the whole thing, communication is key. So, uh, don't be afraid to speak up and, uh, you know, uh, to feel anything and everything. And, uh, you know, knowing that uh, you will recover and, and, you know, the next day, uh, a new day will be better. Like, the, you know, yep. So, uh, and last but not least, on behalf of the uh, research team as well, uh, thank you for the uh, uh, LF Academy team, uh, William, Emily, and all, uh, for helping us and keep reminding us, <laughs> sending emails, <laughs> reminders to us that uh, the, the date is near, you have to prepare this, you have to prepare that, <laughs> and yeah, and keeping us on our toes. So, thank you, thank you very much. Yep. Uh, William, over to you. Yep. Uh, so thank you, a research team, uh, and everyone who contributes to this space. So I guess if I can take away from the presentation that Sophia has shared is to be kind to yourself. Find your personal motivator, something that might excite you, and recalibrate. When there is a change, there is always an opportunity to look forward to. So I hope this is a fruitful, fun learning and sharing sessions for all of you. For anybody within or outside of LF organization, please look forward to the next academy, which is going to happen on the last Friday of the month. Uh, in between, we also organize an academy backside session 
which covers more on hands-on practical skills sharing scheduled to happen on 10th June. So please look forward to that. The calendar invitation will be sent out very soon. So yeah, that's all about uh, it for today, for this month's academic sessions. So I hope you enjoy this session so much. Thank you so much. Stay safe and take care. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. Happy Friday. Thank you everyone. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. Happy Friday. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, Hi, Aman. <laughs> oh, Emily, we all have to go before you can go. Oh, I'm a nice person. I always say that. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. This is a personal thank you to you. Really love the entire show. Thank you for being so active in the chat. Oh, thank you, thank you. It was a team effort. We absolutely made our Friday. This is like the best thing which has happened in this week. So, oh wow, thank must you. Must take a drink on my behalf and enjoy. Oh, we'll do, we'll do for sure. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, Emily. Go home. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Bye, Emily. Bye.